Yes, now um, let's start with um, what power means. What's the definition of the word power? Well, the word power talks about authority. Okay. It talks about being in position of uh, authority, being in control, being in, uh, uh, in rulership position. It talks about having the potential to bring about a thing, to, to, to get a thing to, to perform. Power talks about you know the, the enablement in a thing in, in bringing causing uh, uh, things to manifest or perform the way uh, it should be. So power generally is, is centered around uh, being in command, in position of command. That when you speak, it is done. When you command, it's established. Power, it's um, it, that which brings about. You know when we talk about. A, a possibility, a potential in a thing to find manifestation. That's the word power. It's, it's really loaded. It's really All right, thank you so much. So you talked about authority, yes. um, but also having the potentials to, um, you talked about manifestation, manifestation. Make, bringing things to, to, to manifest. To manifest. Yes. All right. Now, now, what about, what is the significance of a name? Mm, like a name we always have naming ceremonies and all that. Why should I have a name? Oh, names are very important um, uh, because names actually are, are see as a source of our identity. Because you see, names gives us identity. Names are things that God gave to the world in order to bring about, uh, to, in order not so that there will not be chaos or confusion. Now, you imagine a world where there is no name. I mean, there is no identity for anything. You just do whatever, so people get, could get away with things. Mm -hmm. Name uh, is basically, you know, for instance, in the book of Genesis chapter 2 from verse 19 to 20, after God created all things, he uh, brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And that was actually the first um, naming ceremony, so to say, in the okay. world. And then whatever names Adam gave to them was their name. So names are very, very insignificant and important. As a matter of fact, God also is interested in names himself. Uh, that tells us, for instance, God loves names. You know, he, he, in every language, he, he has countless number of names, and he attaches importance to the names that people bear, because your name, names are, I see names as spirit or spiritual beings that, you know, you don't see them, so to say, but it has great effect on, on the person or the thing that has the name. When you call on a, a, a name or speak about a name, about a, uh, someone, you call someone's name, he, he affects his life, he affects his being. So names are very, very important and very significant. As a matter of fact, the point, there are certain instances in the Bible that God had to change some people's name. For instance, Abraham's name is Abraham. His name was formerly Abraham. Okay. And then also his wife, Sarah, God changed her name to Sarah. And so many people like that. He, uh, Jacob, at the point, God called him. He said, your name shall be Israel. And so names are very important because they help us to fulfill our destinies. You know, it has a way of bringing uh, destinies to, to come to pass. All right, very, sir. Very, okay. very important. Okay, if um, names are important and also power is um, authority. Now, what, what would you say is the correlation between a name and power? Now, the, the correlation between these two is, now, the, the name a person or a thing bears uh, has a way of determining the power behind. Because, you see, names, take it from this context, the whole world is formed by word, by the word that we speak, by the word of God. Okay. Framed, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that we understand that by word, the whole world is framed. Now, words are powerful. Words are spirit. Jesus said that my words, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So as you speak a word, you're speaking prophecies, you're speaking uh, things that possibly, I mean, you, you probably may not be seeing them with your eyes, but you are releasing potentials and power into, into the atmosphere, into the air, into the life of the person that bears uh, such a thing. Such a so okay. such also is our names. Because the more people call your name or call the name of the thing, it's speaking power, potential that, that goes along with that name. And, and so there's a lot of correlation and significance in the name that things bear. Things bear. Yeah. Okay, I, I really love the fact that you said things actually bear. Because what came to mind was, for example, the word police. 
I mean, it, it strikes, I mean, it strikes a fear, it, 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 it brings you to, you know, you, you, once you hear the word police, you think about the law enforcement, you think about, for instance, so the, police, if somebody says the police is coming, you're like, I hope all is well, <laughs> you know, it, it strikes so a chord. It strikes a chord, it has power, yes, more or less, or more and more. All right, now, Jesus is the personality in this context. If you're looking at the topic, the power in his name. And um, we all know we are talking about one person, and um, that's Jesus. Now, can you tell us the significance of the name of Jesus? Thank you very much. In the book of Luke, chapter, let's quickly look at Luke, um, chapter number one. Luke, Luke, Luke chapter, chapter number number one. one. Okay. I want us to just read verse thirty-one. Thirty-one. Uh, yes. Okay. Luke chapter one, verse thirty-one, and it says, "And behold, thou shalt con conceive in thy womb." And bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Now, Jesus means Jehovah saves. It means Savior. He said, "For he shall save his people from their sins." Jesus is the name that is given to when God came to the world uh, as a as a man, as a person, and uh, he, he he carried the name. He was given the name Jesus, which means Jehovah has come to save the people from their sins. In the book of um, Isaiah, chapter. Nine. The Bible tells us for that unto us a son is born, unto us a, a unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, God, like I said earlier, loves names, but all the names of God are encapsulated in that singular name, Jesus. Now, when oh. you mention the name Jesus, you are talking about Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah, any name given in all language in all the world. Like I said, in every language, God has countless names. But in every language, he has brought all these names together inside the name of Jesus. Jesus. So when you're mentioning Jesus, you're mentioning all the names of God, and it activates the very potential, the very power that is in the being called the Almighty himself, and he acts. Whoa, that's that's, that's really profound because um, until now I never saw it in that light that all the names of God is actually encapsulated yes. in the name Jesus. of Jesus. So once you mention that name, Jesus, you're releasing all the names, names of God. God, especially when it has to do with different aspects of one's life. That's true. So in whatever aspect of a person's life, the name of Jesus will suffice. That's true. Sir. Whoa, that's explosive. <laughs> I want to believe that you caught that because I just did and I bless the name of the Lord for that. Now, um, it's we already know, but we'd we'll love to know further. How powerful is the name of Jesus? Now, um, we've talked about power, and um, in so many ways, we've experienced power. Um, in diverse ways, in the power of the government, we have UN, United Nations, we have the power of the, um, of the USA, and so on and so forth. So, how powerful is this name? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord Jesus is so great, it's so powerful that it's beyond our imagination. I want us to um, just go with me to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Uh, let's see how powerful the name of Jesus Philippians is. 2. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, I'll read from verse 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which it was also in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on the cross look at verse 9 wherefore god also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, this shows us that the name of Jesus has been set above everything in the whole universe. His authority, the, the power in the name of Jesus is beyond, it exceeds everything in the whole universe, whether in the heavens, in the earth or beneath the earth. So that uh, when you mention the name Jesus, or at the name, at the mention of the name, or hearing at the name Jesus, every power, every knee must bow, bow to his authority. He is the ultimate authority. He is the epitome of all powers. 
he's the supreme, he's, he's the commander general of anything you can think of. So no matter the situation that might actually come one's way, um, the name of Jesus is just more than sufficient. More than sufficient. Well, to take care of anything. Any situation, any circumstance that we face, the name of Jesus is more than enough. So more, uh, more and more believers should be well rest assured that they are taken care of. Very, very well. And that takes us to the next question, which says, um, who qualifies to use this name? Hmm. The name of Jesus, the Bible tells us that there is no other name by which man can be saved except the name of Jesus. Now, the, who qualifies, basically, is a person that believes, first of all, that Jesus Christ is Lord. The person that has accepted Christ Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. The person that qualifies is that person that has accepted that Jesus died for him, that the death of Jesus was his death, that the resurrection of Christ was his resurrection, and that the power in the name of Jesus now belongs to him or her. And basically, that talks about the Christian, the practicing Christian that believes in the word of God. Every one of us qualifies to use, to the, use the, name of Jesus. the name of Jesus. So for those who have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, they are not qualified to use that name. There is, uh, there is a provision that God has made for every man okay. in, Christ, in Jesus Christ. The Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son. The world, not the Christian, that whosoever believes in him. Now the provision, the only way the unbeliever or those that have not accepted him can benefit is first of all, to accept him as a personal Lord and Savior, that is the starting point. Okay, that's when they are made, and that's that 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 um, provision is actually made made for unto every them. Man. Yeah, yes. so they can use that name at that point in time to access and, the power. Okay. Once you uh, to, to to come in and become a, a believer in Christ, first of all, that is who qualifies. If you don't believe in Christ, then why do you use His name? Remember the a situation uh, uh, when um, uh, uh, when the, the seven sons of Sceva. Remember okay. the story; they were trying yes. to cast out a demon from a man, and they say, "We adjure you by Paul, whom by, by in the name of Jesus, whom Paul, Paul preached." They have no relationship with with the Jesus that Paul is preaching, so they they should not use that name. And by the time you remember the story, when uh, they say, okay, the, the man who had the evil spirit pounced on the seven of them and dealt with them because they have no authority. The first thing they should do was to give their life to Christ Jesus. Then they don't have to say in the name of Paul and Jesus, whom Paul, Paul is preached. They should have, they would say, I show you in the name of, authoritatively in Jesus' name and the demon will obey them. Wow. So they were actually like setting the, 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 the cart before the horse. Before the horse. All right. Thank you so much. And now... Why is it that despite the fact that his name is all-powerful, a lot of believers still don't trust that name? Well, one of the problems that we have with a lot of believers, so to say, is uh, probably experiences and um, uh, doubt. And when, when people are, are confronted by situations and circumstances, it's like, well, I've prayed and when, when the devil begins to suggest doubt in their heart, and and that is one of the things that robs a lot of people of of, of the, the using the power in the name, Jesus. and also not really knowing our right in Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus said in the book of John chapter fourteen, uh, he, he, he said, let, "Let me just okay go, go to that John fourteen, yes, uh, John fourteen verse thirteen to fifteen. Okay, John fourteen. Uh, let's quickly uh, read John chapter." 14 verse 13 to 15, 13 to 15 is it's very very um, significant now they said here in verse 14 um, excuse me they said if you love me verse 14 okay John chapter okay 14 14 13, 13 to 15 to, okay I can read from here 13, 13. all right sir okay and whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It also says, If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's 15. Thank you very much. Now, where I'm going is, why people don't use the name? You see, what Christ is doing here, all the power in the name of Christ is handed over to the church. That's the power of athony. The power is like, it's, it's a right. 
Jesus is saying here. Also, he said this a similar thing in the book of John chapter 16. He said, if, if, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask whatsoever, in chapter 15, verse 16, he also said, he said, you did not choose me. Chapter 16, John chapter 15, verse 16, say, you did not choose me, but I choose you, that you should bear fruit and that your fruit shall abide, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my, my name. name. Now, that is the power of attorney, the power that a legal right to use the name of Jesus. It like we, we have in the world today, the, the, like fundamental human rights, rights to freedom, rights to life, rights to this and that. In Christ Jesus, we have also this right to use his name. Now, a lot of people do not have this understanding that it is your legal right to use the name of Christ Jesus. And it could I mean, result in doubt, in, in not being, being fearful, faithlessness, or probably so many things could, could be caused why a lot of people are not using the name, the name of Jesus. Jesus and don't believe in that name. Yes. I like um, for some people who um, maybe somehow, some way they've tried using the name of Jesus, somehow, so, um, somehow it, they, they didn't get the response they wanted. And so somehow, some way doubt had already, you know, been planted in their, in their hearts. Heart, yes. And so the next challenge that comes their way, they're like, no. Um, let me find a way out. Yes, yeah, and that is another problem. Uh, the name may not work, it won't work, of course, if you're trying to mix his name with someone else, something else, another power. You see, some okay. people they profess to be Christians, but somehow they still have somewhere one Baba, one source, you know, that's okay. If it's like telling, say, if this one doesn't work, then I'll this try one this probably one. will work. And you can't mix God. You can't light and dark. They still it. have like um, an, um, an alternate option. They alternate option. As long okay. as you have an alternative to God that you can fall onto, he won't answer you. It's when God is your all in all, your last bubble stop, and you are resolute that God is you alone that can do it. But as long as we are mixing it up with something else, it can't work. All right. Then also, what about um, because um, people don't maybe tarry in the presence of God, and um, mm -hmm. maybe as a result of that, um, they don't believe in the name because they don't they, they they don't they don't abide in his presence that is that's true because um if you don't really know what the promise of god are for you then how do you claim the promises a lot of believers these days are like what we call like i, I don't i don't want to use the word you know um fast track kind of you know once instant, microwave, ma thank you microwave miracle miracle you know nobody wants to tarry in his presence to study his word because you say you shall know the truth how do you know the truth by studying the truth by by looking at him by uh, by, by studying the word so the more we tarry in his presence the more confidence we have in him the more we also fellowship with brethren and we hear the testimonies of others of what jesus had done then you have the boldness and the power to also say jesus that did it in this person's life will also, also do it so our fellowship with christ our fellowship with the, with, with the in the body of christ is very important to help us and help our faith all right i was privileged to read a book some times back and the author was um talking about um, God was actually telling the author that what people do is they, they seek his hands. They don't seek his face. It's, it's like they are using God. They just want God to um, satisfy their needs and all. And um, what he wants is that they seek his face and want his perfect will. True. But people just want, okay, I want this, I want a house, um, so God give me a house. If you don't give me a house, then um, I don't think I'll follow you anymore. That is so. a very, that is very, uh, a very key problem that we're having in our time uh, among the Christian domains. When, when we're seeking God's hands and not his heart, we're not bothered, we're like, God, give me this, give me that, give me this. God also wants to tell you that I also have a need. Whoa! <laughs> yes, God, God, God does. I, I love that. I've actually he, heard that opinion in a, uh, he, for a while. He has needs. He has needs. He needs, yes. Remember okay. when Jesus was about to enter, before the triumphant entry, he sent his disciples in the book of Luke chapter 19. He said, go to the city over against you. We see an ass that is tied. Bring the ass to me. He said, if anybody asks you, why do you lose the ass? Tell him that I have need of it. Whoa. God actually has needs. But we are like God. 
give me this, give me that, give me this, and when I come back in the evening, we continue on, and give me, and it doesn't work like that. God actually wants a relationship. A relationship, okay. But we are not ready to give him that relationship. We are in too much of a hurry. So that, that, that weakens the power in his name in our lives. That's very correct. It's not like the power of God is actually, or the power of his name is not strong enough, but because um, we are not tapping it rightly, that's then somehow, some way, it doesn't just work for us. That's, that's basic truth, sir. Okay. You know, if we are not, you know, we, um, like, he is the son of righteousness. The Bible tells us in the book of Malachi chapter 4, the son of righteousness. Okay. Now, we are like the moon. Now, if you see the relationship between the sun and the moon, moon. the moon reflects the sun. The, the, the light, light of the sun. It gets okay. from the sun. So the position of the moon, the sun is constant. The light doesn't go off. But how much power of, or, or light the moon receives from the sun depends on the position of the moon to the sun. When you have no moon, when there is a period that there is no moon at out, then that means the moon is not properly positioned. Position. But at the time the moon begins to position itself, gradually, 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 you see half moon, then you see the full moon. That is exactly how we are to God. As you position yourself to receive the power of Christ, if you are rightly positioned in Christ, through studying of the world, through worshipping God, through your relationship with God, you receive the power, the anointing grows in you, that when you speak, the authority that you have, the right that you have in the name of Jesus Christ can't just but manifest. It things will obey you just like it will obey. Jesus said in the book of uh, John chapter fourteen, verse twelve. He said, "Greater works than this shall you do." Because I go now. We have in 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 our day and our time. The name of Jesus actually is performing much more than when he was walking alone on the earth. On the earth, okay. And that is how it should be. When you are properly positioned to him, then you receive better. All right, thank you so much, sir. Now, what can the name of Jesus do? Okay, well, okay, we actually took that. Now, what is required of a believer to continually have the right to use his name? Yeah, to us as believers, the right to, to the name of Jesus, not that the, the, the name of Christ Jesus to us is constant. God is not, has never been unfaithful. Now, it is when unfaithfulness is found on our part that such some rights could be uh, caught. Now, when uh, for us to continually use the, the name of Jesus, we re it requires constant fellowshipping with him. Constant fellowship, prayer, in, in prayer, in worshipping God, spending a lot of time blessing his name, calling on his names, uh, seeking his face studying the scriptures speaking to others now jesus said he said in the book of john chapter 15 he said you did not choose me but i choose you that you should go forth and bear fruits and that your fruits shall abide. shall abide and whatsoever now when you are walking in obedience when you are doing what he says you should do winning souls very important the Bible said that the Lord Himself confirming their word with signs and wonders following. That's in the, in the book of um, um, uh, Mark, chapter. I'm sorry, in the book of um, yes, the book of Mark. He said these signs following them confirm the Lord Himself following them confirming their word with signs and, and wonders, wonders following. So when you go out, when you win souls, when you study His word, when you die in His presence, then the power becomes active, manifest in your life. So like, these are some of the things that you, you need to constantly try to keep away from sin because sin robs us of our power in Christ Jesus. It's like disconnects. Okay, so it doesn't, um, it's not sufficient to just say, I've given my life to Jesus, um, and I'll just continue my life. Um, no studying of the word, no prayers, no fellowshipping with the brethren. Um, I'm just born again. I've accepted Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. No, we have to grow. Bible says as newborn babies, we should desire the sincere, sincere milk, milk of, of the, the word. word of God, that we may grow thereby. thereby. So as you, as you study the word of God, as you fellowship in his presence, you are being built up. You are being built up. Also in the place of prayer, like he said in Jude, Jude chapter 20, he said, Beloved, uh, building up yourself in your most holy faith, faith, you pray in the spirit. Now, as you, when you give your life to Jesus, you have to study the Word of God. You have to fellowship more with Him. As you fellowship with Him, you grow in the Spirit. 
we begin to receive the power of this, the gift of the Spirit becomes manifest in your life, and then the power becomes much more uh, uh, manifest. So it's not enough to just say, okay, I'm now born again. Uh, yes, if you pray at your level, God will answer you, but there are certain things that you also need to grow into. You know, we can't continue to be babes in Christ. Because there are some things that babes can't handle. And that is the level that so many people have remained. The level of babes, when God is actually calling you to come into the level of sonship. All right. So no more milk, it's, um, and even no more meat. No more meat. Um, so we start to crack bones. Yes. All right, thank you so much. Uh, at this point, uh, we've come to the end of the first part of Springs of Life. And uh, we'll, be ju- we'll be going on a very short break. And when we come back, the phone lines will be open. So you can call in to ask Pastor your questions. Or you can call in to make your suggestions. Um, it's really, really open to you. Um, until then, we'll just go on a short break. And definitely, we'll be right back. The Word of God enjoins us to study to show ourselves approved of the Lord. If you are one of the people who desire to indeed be approved of God in all your ways, and you desire to understand God's ways, then you need to take Christian literature serious. There is a large collection of inspirational books from Pastor E. A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, that you can pick and read from. Among the numerous titles are David, a man after God's heart, The Last Days, The Ultimate Financial Breakthrough, Divine Encounter, and many more. And just recently added are Time of Favor and The Sovereign Lord. Get yourself a copy. Get extra copies to bless the lives of people around you as well. Books are available at all CRM bookshops, all Christian bookshops, and bookstands in all RCCG province headquarters worldwide. Get yourself a copy of any of the books and be richly blessed. It keeps getting better and better. Another opportunity to be blessed by divinely inspired programs on the Dove television channel has just been made available. You can now download the Dove Television application on your Android phones, iPhones, Blackberry phones, various tablets and iPads. Just visit the appropriate app store depending on your device to download the application which enables you to watch programs and listen to the word of God from anointed men all through the day. Dove Television, on direct to home decoder, on free to air satellite, on mobile internet TV and now on mobile apps, Dove Television, taking back the power of the air. Welcome back. It's still Springs of Life and God has been so good to us today. He has blessed us tremendously. And also we still have Pastor Praise Akune in the house. Um, God has used him tremendously, you know, to shed light on his word. If there is anything I'm going to be taking home today is the fact that all the names of God is actually encapsulated in the name of Jesus. So that's a name that you can trust absolutely and it will surely not fail you. Yeah, please do know that the phone lines are open, still open, and um, you can call in on the program. You can ask Pastor your questions, and he's going to answer. And also, you can call in to make his suggestions. So please do call us. We'd we'll love to hear from you. All right, sir. Um, how should the name of Jesus be used? Thank you. Correctly. How should it be used correctly? Yes, if we go to the scriptures uh, in the book of John chapter 15 that I've been uh, 
Okay, John 15, the same verse 16. Jesus said, and the latter part said, that whatsoever you ask the Father in my, my name, in my name, shall be done to you. Also, in the book of Acts chapter 3, examples of those that used okay, the name, name of Jesus. In the book of Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 16, is a story of Peter and John at the, at the uh, beautiful gate.